I have been promising this video for quite a while now, but I have been busy assembling the printers and shipping them, and never quite figured out how to make it the right way. So today I thought I'll just do it. So here it goes. Selective powder deposition, SPD. How does it work? We selectively pour the powders into a crucible. Sand works as support and metal works as the build material. So we pour it all the way to the top, layer by layer. Then we put a filler metal on top. This is uh, copper. And this is high carbon steel. So we put it on top. We put uh, some coke and uh, some sand to create more pressure. Uh, close it with the lid. Actually, we first close it with the lid and pour more sand through the hole in the lid. And uh, close the hole with something else. And we bake it in a kiln. When we bake it, the filler metal melts and soaks the metal powder through capillary action. It doesn't soak the sand. And when it cool down, cools down, we end up with a solid metal part. Uh, for the metal powder, we can use either iron or nickel or maybe something else. For the filler metal, we can use copper or high carbon steel. And um, let's say in the case of high carbon steel, the carbon content in iron is zero. The carbon content in this is about 4%. So, um, I'm not sure how much exactly, what's the, exactly the ratio, but I would say it's like, let's say 50-50. So we end up with um, about 2% uh, high carbon steel. And the way it works that iron powder itself never melts. This, the kiln temperature is not enough to, um, to melt the iron. But there is a phenomenon that um, carbon from the filler metal can diffuse into a solid iron at reasonably high temperature, at the temperature of the kiln. So when you, have, when you hold it at the, um, let's say, 1250C for like 2-3 hours, the carbon migrates from the filler metal, from the liquid filler metal into the solid iron powder and the carbon content somewhat equalizes. So uh, you end up with somewhat uniform uh, carbon content in the part. In case of uh, copper iron, this doesn't happen much because copper doesn't, um, copper and iron don't mix that much. So even if you hold it for like a couple hours, it still will be uh, not exactly a 50-50% alloy. It will be somewhat of a, like a composite material. But it's uh, it's quite uniform. Like I don't see anything. So when I grind the part, and I, I don't see any like uh, uh, boundaries between particles. So maybe it's good enough. So, in case of um, copper and nickel, copper and nickel, they do alloy together well. And uh, maybe the temperature, kiln temperature was uh, too high because when it get alloyed, the nickel get alloyed with copper, the melting temperature dropped and it started to melt. So, that created this uh, shape distortion, which uh, did not happen here with, with the copper iron. 
So, uh, yeah, this is basically it. Uh, the rest of the video would be just the footage of the pouring. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, if you wonder why do we need coke, uh, coke um, works as a sacrificial material. Uh, it uh, reacts with oxygen, so there is a there is a like the crack between the crucible and the lid, a little bit, uh, so a little bit of the air is coming in. So uh, if we, if we would just let it come in and do nothing about it, the, it would oxidize the metal. So if we put coke, uh, then it reacts with the coke is carbon. It reacts with oxygen, and uh, so the metal is not oxidized. Oh, and another thing, uh, people have been asking. Can I print with mild steel? Uh, yes, you can. If you take the filler metal that instead of like two percent, uh, instead of four percent, would have uh, like lower carbon content, uh, then yeah, you would end up with uh, half of that. So if it's like two percent, you'll end up with like one percent in the uh, in your print. But uh, to melt two percent uh, filler metal, you would need a much higher temperature mil uh, kiln. And if it's like 1%, uh, uh, then yeah, it will be even higher temperature. So yeah, you can, you just need a, a different kiln.